Okay, everybody, good evening and welcome to another Less Music, More Music live stream. Um, tonight we're down at the Sound House and we have with us John Fryer. Good evening, Hello. John. Good, good to be here. Thanks for inviting ah, me. Thank you very much for coming down. Um, I've got to admit, a bit naughty of me, but you're the first artist who, coming along for these sessions, I haven't actually seen play live or my memories let me down. Ah, no. Well, no, probably not, actually, because I've been... Um, Back on the scene for about three or four years, so probably um, you you have so many to see, of course. But uh, no, I've I've been uh, playing around, doing a few bits and bobs here and there. So uh, you'll have to come and, and track me down. Yeah, look at my well, Facebook page or whatever. Again, it's kind of jumping in at a bit of a tangent, but you're probably now not 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 necessarily synonymous with, but you're well known for doing the promotion at the Barley Mow. Yes, do open mic at the Barley Mow. Um, occasionally uh, host it, but I'm always at it uh, with Ruthie Coles. Um, it's a good night. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice venue, quiet venue, but nice. Um, lots of people passing through. Is it the one on the corner on Granby Street? Yes, just down from the station, so that end of Granby Street. Yeah, so, uh, down opposite Blunt Shoes or down down there. But it's a nice little venue. Um, lots of people passing through. They seem to pass through on their way into town. Um, and some really good artists come down. We have a nice, nice crew come down and uh, get a chance to play with some really nice guys and girls. And what night do you run that? That's a Tuesday night. It runs at nine, nine o'clock on a Tuesday night. Oh, right. okay. um, so it's open to anybody to come down, um, all styles. It's not a, not a particular style thing. Anybody can play, yeah. um, which is why they asked me to play, I think. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Um, just to rewind a bit, um, can you give us a bit of background about how you got into music? What prompted you to take up the guitar, singing, performing? Oh, that's my brother's fault. Um, yeah, when I was, uh, my brother's six years older than me. He decided he'd buy a guitar for no reason whatsoever. He never played uh, music at all. I think just got into music a bit with uh, seven inch vinyl, which it was out in those days. Um, played the guitar for about three months, six months, something like that, and then stuck it on his bed and never touched it. So I picked it up um, uh, and began to sort of find a few rudimentary chords um, and then uh, realised I was not too bad at it. So uh, um, so that got me into playing and then I've played ever since. I had bands at school and, uh, um, and stuff of that kind. Um, and then in about 77, 78, began to write my own stuff um, just because I got fed up with what was out there. Um, so uh, I've been writing since then. But I mean, I, then I had a sort of lull really. I didn't do a lot for a few years. Um, and then four or five years ago, uh, I got nagged into going back on the scene and playing some of the open mics, which I did, and got to know a few people. Um, you know, got a few gigs out of that, and um, and here we are now. Also, put out a CD, which came out a couple of years ago, is another one just about to start recording. Um, but I find it it, it 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 was surprising to me that I had to do so much work to get um, to get out there and get known. I mean, obviously. You know, there's a circuit and there's people that are known. Uh, so I just basically um, knocked on a few doors and said, "Hi, this is me. Fancy giving me a go?" So, uh, um, so that that's me back in the in the fold, really. Got you. Um, you mentioned you played in bands as well as playing solo. What yeah, make, I didn't. What makes you choose which you prefer? Playing? Well, I, uh, the band wasn't brilliant, I have to say. We had a band at school uh, in the seven, late seventies, early eighties called Osmosis. Um, just because we all did biology together at A level, <laughs> um, and I have to say that we were we had a lot of enthusiasm, but yeah. not much good equipment. We couldn't afford equipment, um, so we lasted a short while. But um, I, I think I mean I'd love to play in a band, and I like playing in a band. I think I just feel more comfortable on my own uh, because I've not got to marshal three other four other guys, um, get their diaries together, and all that sort of stuff. So I much prefer being on my own because I can just. Stick it in the diary, turn up, plug in, and away I go. Um, but I have played in bands and, and still do play occasionally with 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 one or two bands, um, just for the fun of doing that. I mean, but but I don't I don't know anybody that's looking for a for a rhythm guitarist to be in a band. So and I guess uh, the beauty of being solo is you're in control of everything. Yeah, I can I can decide whether I play covers or play my own stuff or whatever. And I'm and, and if I change my set mid time, you know, mid 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 set or or you know mid mid gig, uh, it doesn't phase five other people so you know I could just say okay well that's that, that sort of song is not going down well tonight so I'll change it and do something else um and if you do that then uh, on your own that's fine but if you've got yeah. four other people to worry about not necessarily that they can pick up and say oh yeah we'll do that one then um, you mentioned um with the band back in the late 70s early 80s um affording instruments was a problem can you yeah. see 
sort of a can, not necessarily drawing a parallel, but can you compare what it would have been like uh, being in a young band then and how you perceive it is now? Because to me, it seems as though it's easier to be in a band and to make music now. Would you agree? I, I think it's definitely easier. I mean, we certainly, uh, we had parental support, which was, I mean, you know, in the days when we were knocking around, amps were full of valves and weighed a ton. Um, nowadays, you can get as much power out of a little, you know, what was in our day a practice amp. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think also, uh, in the scale of things is that, is that people, kids have now got disposable income. You know, I see, I go and do... Um, uh, gigs or auditions and find you know young bands of you know sort of uh, 18 19 year olds who've got huge amount of kit because they've got the disposable income to buy it yeah. I mean I borrowed um, Mike stands in fact I think I, I remember doing one gig where we had a brush um, pinned up against a chair tied to a chair with a, with a mic on it because we couldn't afford stands yeah. um, the drummer was in the band only because he was the only person in school that had a kit, um, <laughs> and he was and bless him, he was he was he was a happy amateur. But you know, we, I think I think the the uh, the accessibility of of of, uh, of, of instruments and and uh, and recording stuff is just huge now, and and you know uh, the, the quality of recording on a phone is just phenomenal yeah. compared to you know we had an old real real tape recorder or a, yeah. a cassette recorder when they came out. Um, but the quality was rubbish because you had a tiny little microphone trying to pick you all up. Um, so you couldn't go around and give somebody a, a tape and say, listen to us play. Because I've got the CDs we made later of the tapes and I think probably they'll stay in a bank vault somewhere because mm. I don't want anybody to listen to them because they're so It makes rubbish. you wonder what John Peel had to go through. Well, yeah, he, he must have, uh, bless him, he must have done a really good job. But yeah, yeah so I think, I think we... We we just if we'd have had the the equipment to do it, we might have got better. Yeah. But I also think that on the other side of that coin is that actually everybody today wants to be famous. In in the days when we were trying out, you had to have a little bit of musical talent to go yeah. somewhere. And probably why we didn't get anywhere. But um, you know, at least we were we were trying. Whereas today, everybody seems to be able to have their five minutes of fame, get on a show, or at least get to an audition. Those days. You know, you literally had to sort of scrape and, and, and climb all over people to try and get something. Um, but if you had no musical talent, you wouldn't get anywhere. Nowadays, I think you, you can, you know, use the equipment to make you sound better. That's not to say that there aren't some brilliant artists out there, because clearly there are. And what about the accessibility of being able to play back in, say, the late 70s, 80s? Well, we we latched into a disco. That seemed to be the thing to do. You know, the, the disco would play for two halves of the evening and we'd have the middle slot. Uh, we generally emptied the place, which was a bit sad. But um, but yeah, I think I think we I think now there are so many venues, so many places looking to have live music. Thankfully, I think um, uh, around the place that you know I, I, you know it, it's hard work in a sense to get a gig and get your foot in the door. But once you do, um, you're there. And if and again, if you've got the, the the talent to be able to do it and to carry it off, then you know people will, will, will want you to play. But I mean, those days it was it was much more. We knocked around the circuit and, and knocked on a few doors, and, and most people said no. Were there the plethora of venues then, would you say, or was it...? I don't think so for the sort of amateur bands. Yeah. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, pubs, by and large, certainly in my experience, weren't doing a, a, a musical nights. They just wanted you know people to come and drink beer and stick the jukebox on. Um so we we tended to play village halls and and school assemb you know, assembly halls and stuff where you know that the, there might be a band night on for schools. There were occasionally you know um, a battle of the bands type things happening at, at a weekend, but few and far between in in the amateur world as far as I could see. And yeah. certainly, we were always looking to try and play somewhere like the Charlotte or somewhere that would be there's a possibility of somebody who knows what they're doing being there to book you for another gig but by and large we couldn't get in the door because and I guess it gives credibility <coughs> to a band back then as well being associated with the venue yes I mean if again if you could link to a venue so much the better but yeah. we we failed abysmally at that so we uh, we disappeared up our own uh, our own <laughs> amplifiers Jackson. yeah exactly <laughs> it was just one of those things we just couldn't um, we couldn't get the break but then I think probably although we did have parental support we were all still at college doing doing A-levels and stuff, so really our parents were really more keen on us getting a proper job yeah. than being a musician. So I think that's um, probably still the case. That probably is still it, the as case. As you say, with the disposable income, it's, it's easier for people to do both now. But I think there is a sense in which you can get it as a proper job because it actually, clearly, for some people, it does pay. And you yeah. can say, well, you know, there's um, you know Ed Sheeran or somebody who sat in his bedroom and did a few numbers and sent them in and somebody said, hey, this guy's good and he was picked up and away he went. Now... You know, for that, you can watch X Factor if you choose to do so and find, you know, 50 people who are rubbish and think they're brilliant. So 
you know, it balances out. But I think there are more opportunities for people. Um, it's a question of whether they actually have the, the, the musical ability and the drive to do it. Yeah. And I think... I mean, you know, my wife will tell you, I've always wanted to be famous. Um, but actually, when it comes to it, I don't want to be famous because I don't want to walk out the door and not be able to go down the shops or to the pub or whatever and not be mobbed. But I would like to just have a bit more, you know, coverage uh, of the things that I do. And lots of people tell me that I'm, that, you know, a reasonably good sort of egg. So, um, it, I, and, you know, I've always felt that. And I think the... Um, it comes back to the band thing. You know, it, you've got to find... I'd, I would have to find four or five people who I felt were this sounds very big headed and it's not meant to, and it's going to come across as that, but worthy of playing alongside me just because, you know, I, you know, I think I know what I can do. But and I have played with the people you're playing with. Yeah. And I have played with people who, and I think, you know, you're, you're spoiling my good song here because you're drumming it wrong or, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's, it's very critical. And I, you know, I hold my hand up to that, but it's much easier therefore to turn up and play your own number and think, well, I messed it up this time rather than, you know, the drummer or the bass player. On that note, could we trouble you to uh, play us a couple of numbers? Yeah, Which sure. hopefully you don't mess up. Well, uh, and you don't have to blame <laughs> no yourself. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> um, this is a song uh, from the, the first album. Um, it's um, uh, it's called Let's Just Try, which seems like an obvious way to start. Um, and um, it's um, it's sort of about, um, uh, it's sort of a love song, but uh, a bit more upbeat than just a, a quiet love song. So uh, anyway, we'll see, we'll see what you think. This is Let's Just Try. Walking in the rain to your front door Cause until I met you I had no idea What this sad old heart was really for Maybe it is quiet here or filled with noise But my mind could only think of you Steadily I travel on to paradise Through the clouds I see a deeper blue Time goes by Don't ask why You and I
Thanks very much. Um, bit of retuning. Uh, this is a song that I wrote in 1978, so before I really got going. Um, probably one of the first songs I wrote. This again is on the album. Um, and it's called Birmingham Road, not because of any particular uh, reason, uh, other than that fitted the metre. And in fact, I looked when I was doing the album, I wanted a picture of, of the signpost saying Birmingham Road. There isn't one in Leicester. Uh, Nuneaton is the nearest I found, and it's not a very thrilling street, I have to say. So if you live on Birmingham Road in Nuneaton, I'm terribly sorry. But uh, anyway, that's uh, just one of those things. But this is Birmingham Road. along down Birmingham Road humming a song that I'm writing nothing is moving down Birmingham Road wish there was something exciting oh Birmingham Road if you could talk Tell stories Oh, Birmingham Road Tell them now Oh, Birmingham Road Up to I wish you could tell me Oh 
Thank you. Again, jumping back a little bit, um, what would you describe as being your musical influences? Um, right, well, I've, I've had a very broad taste for a long time, lo like lots of stuff. I've never sort of pigeonholed it to be one type of music. I think there are a number of people that I would look at in terms of my style, um, if I have one. Um, I, I think um, when I was growing up, the jam work, just coming into prominence and I followed a lot of Paul Weller and, uh, and, and his influence of uh, some of my songs is, is I think, I think there, um, he probably wouldn't agree, but there we are. Bless him. <laughs> um, uh, Moody Blues were huge. My brother was a massive Moody Blues fan, still is, and they're still touring. We're going to see them in June. Are they? Uh, yeah. They're coming to Nottingham. Um, uh, and Justin Haywood is probably my idol as far as songwriting goes. Written a huge amount of stuff. Um, does he play uh, solo as well? Or does uh, he, he, do, he does sometimes. Yeah, he's just had a solo album out last year, uh, the year before. Um, so still writing and still hugely influential for me. Um, I was always a Beatles fan rather than a Stones fan, just because my brother was a Beatles fan. Um, I took a lot of my musical sort of lead from him. Um, so yeah, again, uh, you, you can't beat a Lennon McCartney track for for quality. Um, and I've and I've always tried to aspire to write in those ways. But yeah, lots of lots of different stuff really. I mean, I, my my dad and mum were were quite into into sing, uh, singing along with the radio and stuff. Yeah. And my dad wasn't particularly musical. Mum played the piano and the guitar, but not terribly well. Um, but uh, they they always had music on, so we always had something playing, even if it was Jim Reeves or. Val Dunican or somebody you know that you would cringe at now and probably a lot that you can't now mention because they're in prison um, <laughs> my dad was a big Rolf fan um, a lot of them but, on the BBC well, oh, well yeah BBC. Well, there you go um, <laughs> but no we we always had music around um, uh, but, uh, but I think probably uh, playing along with the stuff that was around at the time I was sort of in my teens was sort of jam yeah um, uh, um, stuff like the Buzzcocks and stuff, you know, people. Are, I wasn't ever a punk. I didn't have enough hair for that. Well, I did at one time. You must I, have had it one I did, time. I did at one time, but it was horrible and lank and greasy, and it just <laughs> no. I wasn't. I I wasn't energetic enough to throw myself around. I think not being a sporty person, I couldn't. I couldn't pogo and do all that sort of stuff. Um, and status quo, strangely enough. I mean, when we had the band, we were much more a rock band than we were a, a, a ballad band or yeah. or, a, or, a, or a melody band in that sense. So there's been a bit of rock in there as well over the years, but over the over the preceding years, I've, I've sort of, you know, even broadened my taste even further and looked at blues and, and jazz, uh, not so much jazz, but um, uh, but but reggae and, and all sorts of other influences, lots of bits and bobs, really. And if you had to describe your own music to somebody who had never heard you play, how would you describe oh, it? I, I, I hate to do that. I mean, people <laughs> ask me that all the time and say, you know, what, what style have you got? And it's me. I don't... Um, I mean, I think probably it would be... It's probably easy to say singer songwriter and 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 somewhere in the sort of I could never aspire to this, but Paul Simon or somebody of that sort of. I always try to tell stories in my songs, so I like I don't like songs that don't say anything. Um, I have a, a, an ongoing dialogue with Ruthie Coles, who writes lots of quality songs, beautiful songs, most of which are fairly depressing by her own uh, admission. Uh, I have a, a very upbeat personality, so I'm always writing songs which are upbeat. Yeah. I occasionally write some downbeat ones. I'm going to sing one in a minute. But um, but generally, you know, I, I, I enjoy life and therefore that comes out in the songwriting. So it, it's a sort of upbeat, Paul simon -y, Paul weller -y type of style. Yeah. And what inspires you to write a song? What triggers a song in you? I, 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 I Musically, it's just rehearsing. I just like to play the guitar. I'll sit... Uh, when I've got some time and just and that's probably one of the reasons that I was out of the scene for a while from from writing point of view because I had kids and when you've got kids little kids you've got an hour to spend twiddling on the guitar because you're doing nappies and school runs and all the other stuff that happens when your kids leave home it, then you start to get a bit more space in the diary and you know um, uh, time to write and I and I musically I write out of playing I mean I literally do just reach in the guitar or sit and strum a few chords and so you just I've jam and something and comes jam around and I think oh that's a nice melody I wonder where that goes I'll, I'll work on that a bit lyrically I, I, I've tried over the years to not just do stuff about me or about my experience and try to think outside the box a little bit one or two 
of the songs that I do now, people say, you know, where did that come from? Yeah. And I can't really say, you know, that was an experience which happened to me because generally it didn't. But um, th- there's one I'm going to play in a minute, the downbeat one, a sort of downbeat one, is, is about a, a, a lady who wants to date somebody and, and, and can't find a date however she tries. Um, and that, thank well. Thank We've got some crew who are in that situation, I'm sure. so I'll <laughs> well, get them to listen. Per- per- perhaps it might, it might give them a few ideas. Uh, but no, we, um, I, I met my wife at, at 16, so uh, we, we've been together since then. So I oh, had all that hearts. problem, you see. So, But, uh, but uh, in- interestingly, and, and, and she'll kill me for this, but I haven't ever really written many songs for her, uh, yeah. uh, although there are one or two. One on the album, which I should do later. Uh, was specifically written for her, but um, but generally I try I try I say I try and tell stories. So I, I look for anything which I either see in the news or hear about or just inspires me to write. Sometimes just a, just a, co- a throwaway comment by somebody. Yeah. Or, and does or it always start head. with the music? Or always starts sub- with the music for me. Right. I'm, so I'm not, not like- a, I'm not a poet. I can't I can't think structure. If I have the structure of the music to work with, I know where I'm going. I can work out words which fit the structure. But um, uh, but I know other people who write you know a bit of poetry, and then I think oh that that could go to music. And I'm I'm much more. Um, uh, inspired by a musical phrase than I am at first by the the lyrical phrase and then when the the written word comes then I can fit it into the musical phrase and then it becomes a song so do the lyrics come as you're jamming along or do you do the whole song musically there's not not a set pattern sometimes it will sometimes it won't and sometimes you know, I, 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 I know in the, in the 80s, I saw an interview with Paul McCartney where he said he never records anything. If you can't remember it in the morning, it's not worth writing. Yeah. Now, I'd love to be like that, but I have a terrible memory. So I have a little pocket thing that I, that I put the songs down on. And I've got stuff on there that's been five, six years sitting there and it's never come to anything. So I have to be inspired to get on with it and to write it. But generally, I, I'm much more likely to write a song in f- in five minutes or or 20 minutes than i am in 20 years because yeah. um you know the song inspires me and i'll go on with it and finish it i like to finish it and if it, if it's taking too long then i'll just stick it in a drawer and think well that's not gone anywhere i've got papers all over the place with the half scribbled lyrics <laughs> on that look good on paper but when they just weren't going nothing's anywhere. come to it yeah. no and, and you have to have that spark of inspiration which is just the thing that you can't quantify that's the thing you, you what- need what prompted you then to do your first CD? What made you think that was the right time? Um, well, I began to get back out on the scene a bit and get back a bit, 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 bit known. And people were saying, oh, I quite like this. You know, have you got this on a CD? Um, and I hadn't. Uh, and then uh, a friend of mine who has got a little studio in his house said, well, let's just try it and see how we get on. And we began to put the CD together and it, and it came. And, and it, it's a twofold thing, really. One is that I'm big headed, of course, like every musician. I want my music out there. So people say, oh, that's really nice. And I've got it on the record player or the CD player in the car. Or, um, But also, I think, you know, if you're going to try and get gigs, you've got to say, say what you sound like. And so the idea for the CD came to, to put it out there and say, this is me. I have to say that, by and large, that's not resulted in a path beating the path to my door. But there we are. That's I, I, I managed to sell enough to pay for it, which is great. Oh, and there are some copies in Sheehan's. If anybody wants any, you can go up there. They've got a nice, good local music uh, selection up there. Um, and they're, so they're selling them. But I, I, I just want my songs to be out there because actually there's no point in writing them and singing them on, in my bedroom. And keeping them and, to yourself. And, yeah, and nobody knows that they're there. Yeah. And and I, 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 amazingly, um, apart from... Uh, needing to be a publicist of yourself when you're out there I actually don't I don't have a lot of confidence that my stuff is good um, uh, usually and then I'll take it out and, and and it really it really does inspire you when somebody who you rate says to you that's a really quality song or that really touched me or you know that's a song I really like so you begin little by little to say well actually probably I can do this and it's and it's okay so that's why CD2 is going to be harder to do because we not because we haven't got songs but we've got too many no I think CD3 is already on, on the <laughs> book somewhere but we've got I've got 20 songs to pick from for a CD well we're not going to get that many on it so um, so we begin recording that uh, in the next month or so and then uh, hopefully we can we can get that out there as well Okay, the next two songs you're going to play for us, are any of them going to be on this? Um, one of them is, is on the CD that I've already released. Yeah. Um, the other one, uh, it might be. Okay. Might be. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet, but it, it might be. Um, but this is a song that I wrote for my wife. Um, um, and it's the title track of the CD. Um, because it just seemed a, a good title. Um, so it's called If That's Alright With You. It's alright with me. <laughs> Being with you is what I like to do 
when I can Holding your hand and walking along Is just where I belong and I know You understand Cause to be with you always seems right All through the day and right through the night Yes, being with you is the right thing to do So let's go If that's all right with you You there with me is the best place to be, that's for sure Seeing you smile and holding you near Seems to banish my fear and bring calm It keeps me from harm Cause to be with you always seems right all through the day and right through the night Yes, being with you is the right thing to do So let's go If that's alright with you Um, this next one is the, is the one I was saying was a bit sort of downbeat. This is probably going on the album. Um, it seems to be going down while I've started playing it around the place and, um, and, and bringing it out a, a, a few times. Um, it's called But No, because it seems to me that, um, uh, that, that there are... I was, I was thinking about whether I would be able to do dating um, if I, if my wife, bless her, uh, ended up under a bus or something, please God not. Uh, but um, if she did, you know, where would I start if I wanted to find somebody else? And um, uh, but then I set it as a lady singing it rather than a man, uh, or it's about a lady rather than a man. Um, just so it didn't focus back on me. But uh, yeah, there's there's lots of lots of different things. Anyway, you'll see how it goes. And uh, it's called But No. Stop for what seemed like hours Would he arrive with some chocolates or flowers But no He didn't arrive at all And then in that queue for the cinema waiting she suddenly knew that she hated this dating, but no, he didn't arrive at all. Why did her choices all turn out so badly? Listening to voices who all clamoured madly 
Surely she'd soon find a lovely Prince Charming But just disappointment, it's all so alarming And no, he didn't arrive at all She sat in the bar in that dress he'd admired The time it was passing, she just felt so tired But no, he didn't arrive at all Why did her choices all turn out so badly? Listening to voices who all clamoured madly Surely she'd soon find a lovely Prince Charming But just disappointment, it's all so alarming And no, he didn't arrive at all From internet dating to flirting with strangers Her loneliness stopping her seeing the dangers But no, he didn't arrive at all She stood at the bus stop for what seemed like hours Would he arrive with some chocolates or flowers But no, he didn't arrive at all He didn't arrive at all He didn't arrive at all Poor lady. <laughs> well, that was, I've got to say, if I'm allowed to say, that was my favourite song. I thought that was a lovely song. Oh, thank you. I don't think she could uh, fail to. Uh, well, <laughs> did you get any tips there, Well, it Joe? paints a picture. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, not failed again. you were the person we were referring to. Well, they're the places days, not to go to if you want to get a, get, <laughs> get a date. I just start bringing chocolates and flowers. Ah, well, that might be the case. Yeah, I'll chocolates and flowers. Yeah, the trouble is if they get a bit squashed or, or, or they're, they're a bit out of date, you might not be, uh, you might be on a winner there. And flowers are always difficult because you get them trapped in the door and stuff. So, yeah, and I just yeah. hope you get away with the song by changing the sex. <laughs> well, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't intend to go, very brave one. I don't intend to go dating, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that actually leads me on quite nicely to the next question. What are your other interests outside of music? Um, well... Uh, I, I uh, for my sins, I um, I uh, uh, go around to uh, schools as a job doing puppets, um, which I've uh, done for twenty years. Um, so I'm known uh, quite a lot by kids around the city uh, as Mr. Scrappy, who's my main puppet. So I do that. Um, I, and so therefore, out of that, I do puppet workshops and uh, uh, and stuff of that nature, which is a which is a weird world to inhabit. Um, I'm just <laughs> starting to get um, to grips with ventriloquism, which is kind of difficult. Um, wow. My he he heroine, I suppose, is uh, is Nina Conti, who's brilliant, and uh, went to see her at the comedy festival. Uh, fantastic lady, very very good ventriloquist. Um, but yeah, so I knock around with puppets all day, which is a bit weird. Um, uh, so I'm, 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 it's very strange not to have my hand up here somewhere uh, when I'm doing this. Um, but it's nice to, to have something different to do. Um, yeah. I, I have uh, uh, my uh, three boys and three grandchildren. Um, Are two, any of two, them two. into music? Um, the, all the three boys were into music at one time. Uh, when there was a Leicestershire Arts, which they used to be in the uh, in the 80s and 90s, they all played brass um, uh I think two played tuba and one euphonium, um, and uh, but they're they're all into music, 
Um, I'm not sure, well, Robert, my eldest, is into the jam, so he's a big, uh, I'm happy with that. He's not very keen on the Midi Blues. Uh, I'm trying to educate yeah, him there. Um, and the other two are into stuff that I tend to uh, avoid, really, um, uh, just because uh, um, we, we, my youngest still lives at home, shares a car. Uh, we, which we, so when I get in the car and switch on and the subwoofer's in the boot doing, doing four billion decibels in my ear and there's blood pouring down because it's whatever he's listening to. Um, so we, we disagree on, on, on musical stuff, but they, uh, they don't, none of them have carried on playing, sadly. I'm, I'm quite sad about that, really, because yeah. um, one plays guitar and one plays piano, or can do. Um, but they just they have no time to do that at the moment. Yeah. I suppose they might come back to it at some point. But yeah, and my wife sings. So um, yeah, we've we've always been sort of musical as a family. But um, but I'm the one who goes out and leaves them all behind and goes and takes my guitar out. But it, yeah, and I have a dog. Um, my dog is 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 called Dyson because he eats everything off the floor. Uh-huh. Um, but he's a, he's a little gem really, and he keeps me fit. Um, so I go and do that. But I've never been sort of sporty or I read quite a lot. I read quite a lot of biographies and stuff. So I'm quite quite into reading. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, unashamedly go to church and have a, a whole life there. So for the, the, the sort of intermediate years when I didn't go out on the road, I was doing stuff in churches and playing in churches. So that was just a whole different part of my life. Really. Yeah. And I uh, uh, did that for 30 years and they decided, well, you know, there's a whole world out there of other people to, to go and play music with so um discovering a whole new lost friends which is really nice yeah in what way do you feel that social media is important in music now because you do play about with facebook a bit don't you yeah i i um i, I did have a, a facebook page for a while um but I, but i also I, I find that that's the way to keep in touch i have i don't know a couple of hundred friends on there my wife says who are all these people um <laughs> and i said well they're, they're all musical people there are people that i've met either on, on uh, the same bill or, you know, just happened to bump into or they've come to an open mic or I've gone to hear them play and got to chat into them afterwards. Um, and, and it is a good networking tool, I think, to, to be in that world and to be, you know, part of the musical world and find out what's going on. I mean, I found out about this from from uh, from, from the Facebook stuff. Um, yeah. I, you know, I've, I've applied for things uh, to play at festivals and things via websites and via Facebook. Um I have a little website of my own, um, which seems to get a few hits and, and um, it's got links to YouTube and stuff that people have put on. Um, I'm not hugely technical, so I don't tend to sort of want to, you know, do a lot of technical stuff. Um, but there's enough out there. And I, and I just turned into, I don't know whether you remember Boys from the Black Stuff. You you look like you're old enough to remember that, Alan. Gives a job. Uh, gives a job. Well, I, I think you have to be a gives a job type of person to be a musical person. You have to go and say, gives a gig. You know, I'll, yeah. play, I'll play that. I can back him. I can support them. I can, you know, um, and, and quite often you have to sort of, you know, get on your knees and say, please let me play. Um, but but, um, but the, the whole world of social media means that you can actually get out there and say, this is me. And, and that, that's where the question comes, what sort of stuff do you do? So, yeah. uh, so it goes back to that. But yeah, I think you just have to use what's out there and Facebook is out there and there are a lot of people on there that, that are either looking for musicians or are musicians and, you know, I've, I've made a lot of friends that way, which is really nice. And just turning the Gizzard gig round a little bit, do you tend to go to many gigs where you're not playing? Do you go and see other people play? I try to. I mean, again, when when uh, when you do play, you could be out every night of the week because yeah. there is something you can go and play at. Um uh, you know, even if it's only, only open mics, there's there's one most nights of the week. Um, so it doesn't leave a lot of time to go to other gigs. But I do try and support other local artists. I've had a number of people that I go and see. Um, you Anybody know, you're when particularly it, watching? Or? Well, I mean, I, 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 I like people of my era, really. So, I mean, I like people like Steve Parker, Kevin Hewitt, um, um, Dawson and the Dissenters, um, or the Notorious Dawson Brothers, whichever Dawson Smith is playing with at the time. Um, uh, there's um, Mama Don't Allow, which is a rock and roll band. Mike Pruden is a good friend of mine. Um, so lots and lots of people out there that I like to go and see. Um, if I'm able to, but yeah. quite often it either clashes with something else because there's usually two or three things on in a night, um, or there's something else happening in the family, or you know you've got to run in law somewhere, or you know. So th- it tends to be the case that you can't go to everything, but I do try and get some some things. I don't tend to go. One or two of my friends in the music world go out of the city or out of the county to play. They'll go to Nottingham or Northampton, and I don't tend to do that. A because I have a life outside of music, and therefore I have to you know commitments and stuff um but i but i like to keep it local and local for me is leicester i've been um, somebody said to me the other week are you 
lived in Leicester all your life. I said, what, so far? Um, <laughs> because, you know, I was born here and I, and, I li- and, and I like the city and I think, you know, the Richard III stuff did us proud, really. I think we, we, we undersell ourselves and certainly in the music era, you know, I'm, I'm getting fed up of turning on the beat and finding that they're talking about Nottingham gigs um, when there's, there's, there's a whole world of Leicester out there and loads and loads of talented people and loads and loads of venues. We just don't seem to be able to join up the dots and say, hey, this is us and we're good. Yeah, um, there is that kind of disconnect. There's not a totally concerted image of Leicester music. No. But in some way, I think that fractious nature of it, if you're actually in the city, is a good thing. I think if you're trying to sell the city as a, a musical city of excellence, then it's not so good. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm much more concerned, really, that there are, I don't know how many people are in the city, how, what's, the, what's the population of Leicester? Quite, quite a lot, but most of them don't know that down the road at a local pub is a great band that you ought to go and see, or, yeah. you know, a singer-songwriter who's writing some quality stuff. And I, and I try wherever I, I go to, to say to people, get out there and look, because actually on a Friday night, Saturday night, Thursday night, whatever night you want to go, that there's a good band playing somewhere, and it's you know this, 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 this venue here is, is is a great you know witness to that. Yeah. that. You know, there's loads of people of loads of different styles, of loads of different ages. There is something for you to go and see, and what what we don't seem to do is to promote that well to people who aren't in the music yeah. sphere. So you know, the, I I talk to my neighbours and say, you know, at, we, at Riverside a few years ago, we, I stood next to my, I happened to bump into my neighbour, literally my house neighbour. Um, who was watching Al Sampson's band, um, Mojo Hand, a brilliant uh, yeah. band, and, and he said, well, I never knew they existed, I never heard of them. Uh, and now he's gone and sought them out and seen them at gigs. So there's a lot out there, and, and you know, we somehow or other we've got to crack this, we've got to say we are here and we are producing good music and come and listen to it. Cause it's that's one of the lofty thing. ideals we had with trying to do this, but I think we're only scratching the surface, and unfortunately <coughs> we're probably doing what happens very often in that we're only communicating with other musicians and it's to yeah. get to the great on watch, yeah. as you yeah. say, to tell them yeah. uh, just what is out there. And often for like a five pounds, quite often for free. Well, yeah, many, and many it's times. It's not an expensive you... night. No, and, and you know, there are some really good venues where you can wander in, see a good band and, and have a, a pie and a pizza or whatever, you know, where, whatever, wherever you go in. And, and, have a, and come home and have a really good night and you don't have to pay 40, 50 quid to go down to London or Birmingham and see no. you know, the massive bands, you can go and see somebody who's, who's grafted round and, and done some good stuff and some up and coming people who may make it big in the future yeah. you know, you never know who's, who's out there so there's loads of stuff to go and watch it's just a question of come out and see us because we're actually putting our hearts on the line here to, to play good stuff for you Well that's a great positive note to kind of finish on because we're sort of running out of time Um, Just before you play your final song, I'd like to say again thanks to the Soundhouse for accommodating us, thanks to Greg, uh, thanks to Joe for our audio tonight, um, and thank you very much as well to you, John, for coming along and uh, talking to us and playing some music. My pleasure. If you could play us out with your final song, that'd be lovely. I shall, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play a song um, which is a bit weird, really. Uh, um, It's weird in the fact that it's uh, it's on the album that I did before, and... um, the reason it's weird is because it's called The Witch's Hat, uh, which is a bit of an odd bod, really. I mean, I, I didn't actually write this song, although I do it quite a lot. Um, I live in the house of the lady who wrote it. That's, that's the way that it is. Um, but it's actually nothing about witches. It's actually about church childhood uh, memories because actually it's about a playground equipment. Um, the, there used to be a roundabout called a witch's hat, um, which you could knock your mates off. It was great. You sat on that side, he sat on that side. It looked like a witch's hat. You could spin round, but you could also knock them off. Um, uh, and this is a song about that. It's about childhood memories and uh, it's a bit folky, but it's a quite a good stomper. You'll be singing it for the rest of the night. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Above the ground, which is had to keep on turning round and round and round, round and round and round, sways above the ground, which is had to keep on turning round and round and round. Andrew running homeward from the recreation ground, school was over, soon be time for tea. In the park behind him, left her echoing around, couldn't make it out and ran to see. 
round and round and round This way's above the ground Which is how to keep on turning round and round and round Round and round and round This way's above the ground Which is how to keep on turning round and round and round Andrew ran between the swings and jumped across the slide Saw the witch's hat begin to sway When his friends saw Andrew they said come and join the ride But when he grabbed the bar it tore away Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Rising from the gravel, Andrew felt the grazes sting Standing poised, he reached out for the seat The boys were pushing harder and the hat began to swing The movement almost knocked him off his feet Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Andrew running homeward from the recreation ground School was over, soon be time for tea In the park behind him, laughter echoing around Tears popped in his eyes, he couldn't see Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Round and round and round, the sway's above the ground Witches had to keep on turning round and round and round Round and round and round Sways above the ground, which is that to keep on turning round and round and round, round and round and round. Sways above the ground, which is that to keep on turning round and round and round and round.